Well, hello. It's been a long time, hasn't it? I didn't intend to be on this long, but work and chores and all that got in the way. Just a quick update. Uh, hopefully I'll make more videos more regularly. I've been going to the dentist quite often, sadly, and because I have to get all my wisdom teeth out. Just had one out a couple of days ago, and uh, it's only just stopped bleeding. And um, anyway, enough of all that boring talk. Let's get on with the subject of the video, shall we? So, this is a response, a video of sorts. I'll uh, put the comment on screen, there's a few of them. But essentially, something that the left says all the time is that 40k is a parody. That's what they always say. Now, why might they say that? Because you and I, you know, we look at 40k and you say, where is the parody exactly? Where is it? It seems pretty sincere and serious to me. I don't see any parody. Where is it? Even people that say it used to be a parody, I wouldn't say that's entirely correct. I mean, sure, it wasn't quite as serious, but I still wouldn't say it was entirely a parody. You, you know, I mean, you look at any media in the 80s, a lot of it was, you know, most of it was quite silly compared to today's standards. Um, but, you know, look at 40k as a setting as it is now. What part of it is a parody exactly? And Especially when you look at something like Horus Heresy, it's incredibly serious. I, I cannot see any part of it that's a parody. But before we get into that, let's talk about why it might be beneficial to call this a parody for the left. And to you know, just go into another example. I know it's not exactly the same, but let's go into Harry Potter. Now, Harry Potter is something that the left loves. Now, of course, now they have to secretly enjoy it. They can't say they enjoy it publicly. But they used to be big into it. Back in the day when Tumblr was huge, you had like Harry Potter and was it Supernatural and Doctor Who and you know all these crazy fandoms full of lefties. And Harry Potter was one of the biggest, of course. But then what happened is old uh, what's her face? I've forgotten her name. The writer of Harry Potter. I can't believe I've forgotten her name. Or whatever her name is. The lady that they absolutely hate. Um, I can't even know what she said now, I forget, but it was something that was transphobic. And so, of course, for years now, they've gone after her and, you know, she's persona non grata and you're not allowed to like Harry Potter anymore if you're on the left because it's transphobic and all this other stuff. Um, it's ridiculous, isn't it, when she's a feminist and, you know, all she said is like, oh, you know, you shouldn't have men in women's prisons and things like that. And, of course, that's enough to, to brand you as like, alt right and transphobic and all this other bullshit. So, something that has become clear is that the left still love Harry Potter. They just do it secretly. And a big example of that was um, Hogwarts Legacy. When that came out, the left did what they usually did. They went after people. They, made, they had a website where they made a list of any streamer playing the game so you could go and harass them. They made women cry. They made a VTuber run away. They did all these horrible things, as they always do. But then you have Reset Era, which is, you know, sort of a hive. It's where all the degeneracy comes from, especially in the video game industry. And it turns out, someone went on to Steam, and they're like, oh, hey, here's the Reset Era Steam group. What are, what are the, the members up to? Oh, they're all playing Hogwarts Legacy, of course. And one of the top members, playing Hogwarts Legacy. Of course, the other game, I forget what it's called, the Woke Shitty Game that came out with the black woman where like, for an hour it's like a black woman who's you know, suffering because she's black and it was racist and they rate that the, the, the model only played that like 10 minutes he couldn't stand that of course but he was playing Hogwarts Legacy so I mean as you can see it's obvious the left still love Harry Potter of course they do it's one of their favorite things they just have to secretly like it because that's what a cult does a cult says, you know, you can't like this, you can't like this, you can't like this. The cult members, out of fear, have to say, okay, I don't like that. But it's secretly, they do. It's always how it works. And I know it's not exactly the same as 40k, because it's the, the creator that they hate, rather than the actual um, setting itself. Um, but it's still, and you can see where I'm going here, is like, 40k, if it wasn't declared a, uh, to be a parody, they couldn't like it. They couldn't enjoy 40k. Because it would, they would say, well, it's fascist, it's racist, it's xenophobic, and all this shit. They wouldn't be allowed to, to like 40k. It has to be declared a parody. 
That's so that's why it's a benefit to call it a parody because then they can say, "Oh, it's just a parody," so I can enjoy it. Of course, you can then say, "Well, why does it need to change? Why does it need to be more quote unquote diverse and all that if it's a parody?" What? But there's no point in trying to use logic. Um, but you know, to to go on to the original point, is it a parody? Well, no, no, it's not. I mean, what part of it is a parody? They say, "Oh, well." They always focus on the Imperium of Man, which is the main you know, focus of the setting. And they say, well, it's a parody. It's because it's fascism. And it's a parody. It's, it's what not to do. How is it, though? How is it? You know, like just because it's, you know, just because it's a right wing setting, just because it's, it's not globo homo doesn't mean it's a parody. Um, and they, of course, they never look at um, the setting either. Let's look at the Imperium of Man in a bubble. Even if you want to say the Imperium of Man is a terrible thing. And there are you know, a lot of dark sides to the Imperium of Man, for sure. But it's not, you know, it's not as entirely as bad in any way and form as they make it sound. But you have to look at the, the world they live in. You can't look at it as a bubble. You know, the Imperium of Man, to survive, they have to, you know, if they have to and say, burn the heretics. Because if you don't, then the entire world, you know, an entire hive world could be taken over by a cult of chaos and turned to chaos. And you've just lost it all. Which is ironically what's happened to the West, is like the cult of Slanesh has taken over the LGBT and corrupted everything. Um, so where? Where is it a parody? The answer is nowhere. And it's lately I've been going through Horace Heresy, I've been listening to the audiobooks, and like the whole thing's sincere. There's no part of it I can think of that sounds like a parody. Just like 40k setting um, as a whole, there's no part of it I can think that's a parody. Yeah, it's over the top, um, and you know some silly stuff in there for sure. But it's just an you know it's a pretty over the top setting. Horus Heresy. I don't think there's anything so far that's been over the top. It's been very serious. It's been very philosophical as well, um, and. I must say, like you know, I understand a lot more things now than I do did when I was a kid. There's a lot of things when I was a kid that went over my head, especially 40k as a whole. But anyway, I uh, am rambling on. How long have I been rambling on anyway? Can't tell. Well, I'm gonna get a drink or something. My mouth really hurts. So, if the left tells you, if the left tells you that 40k is a parody, you know, of course it isn't. You know, it's up to it's up to them to try and explain that bullshit but they never will be after because it's not a parody even even like the early you know 80s setting wasn't a parody really it was just a bit silly but it was enough for me see you later